Again, many Christian flat earthers are passionate about this issue. That's because they believe the idea of a round earth is part of the great deception mentioned several times in scripture. And while we hope we've made a strong case against the flat earth model, the heart of their argument is valid. There is a strong deception. It asks us to follow and trust the world over Christ. But the true hope is putting our faith in Christ the Savior. Pat, we're here at Fort Stevens here right by the entry of the Columbia into the ocean. This is such a cool place because this is where they defended against any enemy that might try and come in during World War II. Kyle, what that makes me realize is that, uh, you know, different battles are important for Christians to fight. Yes. And when it comes to the shape of the earth, this isn't one of them. No. It's really not. No. But what's really important is what you do with Christ. That's right. The Bible tells us that at the very beginning, God created a beautiful world. It was without any sin, any evil. And it stayed that way for a short period of time. Right, and then God created Adam and Eve and gave them a choice to either uh, follow his rules or that he could rebel and disobey him. And sadly, they rebelled and disobeyed. And at that point, God put a curse on all of creation. And ever since that time, we've seen that things have been getting worse and worse. Things wear out, things run down, people die. We so, see so much evil in this world right now. Mm -hmm. And I think people don't understand where that came from. Well, it came from our rebellion, right? That's right, that's right. And Romans says that everyone is an enemy of God. God created everything, but we're all enemies because of our sin and our rebellion. But he didn't leave it there, right? Right, he's a loving God. And from the very beginning, he promised that he would send a redeemer, a Messiah. That's right. And that was a promised Messiah that was spoken of for thousands of years. And finally, Kyle, that Messiah came, Jesus Christ. He lived amongst us. He lived perfectly. He did not break the law. He lived perfectly without sin. That's right. And then he died uh, to pay the sin that we were supposed to pay for. Because remember, in Romans 3.23, it says that all have sinned. And in Romans 6.23, it says the wages of sin is death. Yes. And we deserve to pay for that death. But instead, Christ died in our place. I love the example where it looks at a judge where he condemns the people in front of him, then he comes down and he pays the price for what they deserve, that judgment. And that's called God's grace, but it's through Jesus Christ. Jesus said himself in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him might not perish, but have everlasting life. Right, exactly. So Kyle, if somebody's watching this right now, maybe they don't believe or they have not believed in the past. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking about the shape of the earth, but right. we're talking about what they've done with Christ, but they feel like they would like to have that salvation. Yes. What do they do? Well, the first part is to realize you're lost and you can never do anything on to make own. yourself yeah, good right. enough on your own right. before God. Right. And that God himself sent his only son to die in your place, to take the punishment that you deserve. It's not just a belief, you have to repent. You have to say, I can't do it. Please God, help. Then it's, it's crying out to God and saying, I believe that Jesus was your son and that I accept and believe that he paid the price for my sin. God, please come into my life and let Jesus live through me. As you're watching this right now, if you feel like God's tugging on your heart, I just encourage you that, uh, that you spend some time right now just letting the Lord know that you understand that you are a sinner and that you deserve death for what you've done, but that you uh, understand that it's Christ who died in your spot and that you want to take him as savior. So Kyle, that's uh, I think one of the greatest things that we've ever done in our lives, right? Oh, very much so. He's changed my life and uh, I'll never go back.